Hey everyone, this is Rob with Codecademy, a software developer based in Seattle, Washington. If you've ever wondered exactly what the blockchain is, then you've come to just the right place. In this video, I'm going to discuss what makes up the blockchain and also how the blockchain is used in the real world. Okay, let's get started. In the following video, we're going to break down blockchain as a distributed ledger, permissioned, immutable, and also popular expressions such as cryptocurrency and other current and possible implementations of the blockchain. When you think of blockchain, you probably think of cryptocurrencies and big names like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin burst onto the scene in 2009 when the first Bitcoin was mined after an individual or group of people under the name of Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a white paper in 2008 called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. However, blockchain as a concept was first discussed in 1991, not in relation to making money, but as a way of verifying contents with an immutable timestamp of a document. It was a way of authenticating a document to ensure it hadn't been tampered with while not revealing the document contents. Its original purpose was authenticity, immutability, and privacy. These are key to our understanding of blockchain today and how it's used. Let's begin by looking at a blockchain as a distributed ledger, which simply means that a ledger is spread across the network among all peers in the network, and each peer holds a copy of the complete ledger. You can think of it as a Microsoft Word document versus a Google Doc. Microsoft Word is a centralized item, much like a bank or government institution with data. In a Word document, there is one source of truth. You can pass it to someone, and while they have it, you are not able to do anything or see what they are doing themselves. However, with the Google Doc, you and any number of people can have access to the same source of truth at the same time. It is decentralized. Blockchain is similar to a Google Doc in which everyone can have access to it at once. Everyone can read it, and everyone can add to it, and everyone can see those additions. The significant difference is that while you can edit the content of a Google Doc, it is not permissible to edit something that's already been entered into the blockchain. This is a feature of blockchain. It is immutable. We are going to look at how the blockchain achieves this in just a moment. Right now, the blockchain might feel like magic. So let's talk more about what makes up the blockchain and how it achieves authenticity, immutability, and privacy. Let's imagine that we have a block. Depending on the type of blockchain, this will contain specific data. For example, let's look at cryptocurrency. This data would likely contain the sender, the receiver, and also the amount of coin being sent. Another example of a block could be food tracking. This could be data of where the food was harvested or where the food was manufactured and the locations where the food was purchased. In the case of foodborne diseases, the source could be quickly detected and other distribution sources could be notified in minutes or hours rather than days or weeks. Another example could be the automobile industry. This could address odometer fraud because odometer tampering to make a car seem like it has engaged less wear and tear makes a car more valuable. Instead, a block could contain the car, date, and updated mileage to the blockchain where a true record could be kept and accessed. So how can we trust the data can't be manipulated or changed? Let's take a look at that next. Each block has a hash value. A cryptographic hash function is an algorithm that can be run on data such as an individual file or a password to produce a value called a checksum. This is how blockchain achieves immutability. Each block has a unique fingerprint called a hash. The main use of a cryptographic hash function is to verify the authenticity of a piece of data. Two files can be assumed to be identical only if the checksums generated from each file using the same cryptographic hash function are identical. While there are several different classes of cryptographic hash functions, they all share the same four properties. Let's go ahead and take a look at the four qualities of a cryptographic hash function needed to be useful. The first property is that they must be computationally efficient. This is just a fancy way of saying that computers must be able to perform a hash function's mathematical labor in an extremely short period of time. 
The second property is that they must be deterministic. For any given input, a hash function must always give the same result. If you put in the same input 10 million times in a row, a hash function must produce the same exact output then 10 million times over. A hash function must be pre-image resistant. This means that the output of a cryptographic hash function must not reveal any information about the input. It's important to note that cryptographic hashing algorithms can receive any kind of input. The input can be numbers, letters, words, or punctuation marks. It can be a single character, a sentence from a book, a page from a book, or an entire book. No matter what the size, the hash function must not reveal any information about the input. The fourth property is that it must be collision resistant. This means that it must be extremely unlikely, in other words, practically impossible, to find two different inputs that produce the same output. While inputs can vary in length, outputs are a fixed size and a fixed length, meaning a fixed number of possibilities, so the hash must be precise in not producing the same output. So how can we really trust that the data can't be manipulated or changed? What makes the blockchain immutable? We can trust the immutability of the blockchain because blocks are linked together with other blocks by their hash value with a pointer. Each block has a pointer to the block before it and is pointed to by the block after it. The exception to this is the first block, also known as the genesis block. Each block's hash value is determined by the hash function that runs on the data. So if you change the data or try to manipulate the data, then the hash value will change. This means that if we change the value in the second block, then we have a new hash value and the third block no longer points to the second block, therefore invalidating the data. This is where our shared ledger comes in handy. Unless you have control of over 50% of the computers with a shared ledger, there is no way that this invalidated block will be accepted into the chain. This makes fraudulent activity nearly impossible on the blockchain. This means you couldn't alter odometer data records, crypto coin transactions, or information about harvest location because all of this information is shared, uniquely identified, and immutable. Blockchain may have limitless expressions, but a few things that they will all have in common are 1. They will operate peer-to-peer, -peer, no central authority to control or manipulate it. All participants talk to each other directly. This allows for data exchange to be made directly with no third parties involved. Distributed. The ledger is spread across the whole network, which makes tampering not so easy. Cryptographically secured. Cryptography is used for the security services to make the ledger tamper-proof. And fourth, add only. Data can only be added in the blockchain in time sequential order. This property implies that once data is added to the blockchain, it is almost impossible to change the data and can be considered practically immutable. Blockchain still has a few obstacles to overcome. The first is education. Without adequate knowledge on how exactly to implement the technology, many companies simply steer clear of it. Blockchain is new territory for everyone, and the reluctance of many to put trust in the system contributes greatly to a delay in widespread use. So a vital step is education. Educating the public on not only why to use it and why to care, but how to use it easily and safely will make all the difference. While banks and governments are looking to adopt blockchain, they may see decentralized data or currency as a threat as their centralized data or money, which their users or citizens may no longer need in a peer-to-peer -peer world, would result in a loss of power, which may lead to demotivation of government or bank institutions. Usability and ease of use can be a struggle as well. While cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin can be used for a transaction, it is closer to the equivalent of gold today as a way of storing money, as our current means of transactions can make it not as easy to spend or not as fast to transact. And finally, technology. The design of some blockchains creates a bottleneck as the number of transactions grow. The original design of Bitcoin limited performances to seven transactions per second. By comparison, the well-established Visa card network can process thousands per second. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped to demystify the blockchain for you. This is Rob with Codecademy. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel 
or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your learning to the next level, join Codecademy today.